I loved it, my paper. I love my paper. But now it's not much in there. We're wrapping up Leviticus. We made it through. You know, so many people look at Leviticus and say, oh, I don't want to do that. But I think we found out Leviticus has a lot in there for us. A lot in there for Christians, and it's a lot more than just how to sacrifice things. In chapters 25 through 27, we're going to get a hint of why the Israelites had so many problems and why they may continue to have problems. Leviticus 25 talks about the Sabbath year, and it's divided into three different sections. A Sabbath for the land in verses 1 through 22, the redemption of the land for the Jubilee in verses 23 through 38, and redemption of slaves in the Jubilee in verses 39 through 55. Now, this issue of slavery has always bugged me in the Bible because a lot of people throw that up to us. Well, the Bible permits slavery, and I always said, no, it doesn't. You have to read what the Bible says about slavery. It doesn't, it doesn't, perm, it doesn't condone slavery. It realizes that slavery exists. And it also gives us rules on how we should treat people how we should treat slaves. And the misinterpretations that were used by Christians to allow slavery in our history and, and in, in Britain were just so far off, it wasn't funny. So I found a, that 10 page document that you guys also have and, about slavery. And I started on the, on the, on the front, it, it goes this way. Yeah. It, 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 Stapled on the wrong corner. Is, there, is everything stapled in the wrong corner? Yes. No, just no, this one. Just yours. Well, I don't know. No, yeah. the one about slavery. It's page 10. It says page 10 on the bottom here. Well, yeah. And I started reading it because it I thought like, that Oh, it got stapled. Stapled on the wrong corner. Oh, oh my Joyce, side. can I see yours? See, I've got like 10 corners. Yeah. Oh, mine's stapled on the wrong yeah. corner. So, oh, so this is page 1. Staple should be up here. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay, so you My, get the mine's bad not. One. You <laughs> get the bad one. Well, I I picked it up. And started... Just pretend you're dyslexic. For <laughs> well, I might be. I pretend don't know. you're reading Hebrew. You're reading from right to left. Well, I started reading it and then I turned the page and I thought that don't make sense. It's like that says page. T I got t look take my well. I can well I can read it backwards. That's fine. Well, take a good one. Sign That's okay. One. I'll. I'll we already started. I, Don't worry. Did you put the new disc in? I put in? the card in there. Sorry. Okay, so, um, God well, says. Okay. I, I think we need to define slavery, too, because we are all slaves in Christ. That we are. <coughs> that Prisoners, we are. slaves. What, what people talk about are people who the, the are American sla slaves. Right, are right. slaves, are, too. I have an answer. And American slavery, we didn't, we didn't originate it. You know, the, the Moors originated it when they took, when they abducted Christians from Spain and took them back to Africa. The British were really good at it, and that's kind of where we got the idea from. And the British made slaves out of just about everybody, especially the Irish. They have, oh man, they have something against the Irish that will never die. And It's because they're connected well, by whatever. land. It's when they came here, they were really um, ridiculed. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, the, the British made slaves out of the Irish, even over here. Most of the Irish, yeah. a lot of the Irish children were on that orphan train. Yes, mm -hmm. that too. They were a lot of orphans. Yeah. A lot of Irish children. Yeah, the, the mistreatment of people just goes on and on and on. If there's anything different about you, you're going to be mistreated. Anything. That's why Anything, right. if we paid attention right. to the Bible, we'd be a lot better off. But we don't. So, the Lord says, when you enter the land I'm going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath. The Lord says, for six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, the land is going to have a year of Sabbath, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do you think that's this year for why we've had the issues we've had with the farms. I'm wondering about that every time I look out there. and the, Some fields never got planted. and yeah. This was their you year to, to rest. Off, maybe. Three. Oh, 
Mm -hmm. You'd have to count Maybe off. there's some reasoning. I've noticed a lot of those that didn't get planted with corner beans then later got planted with a cover crop. Mm -hmm. well, like a radishes. Frank said he planted radishes. Really? Right? Because the roots go so low, he won't use them. But he'll plow them under mm -hmm. because they're so good for the really soil. Really? Radishes? My, so my that dad used soil to plant. should really be good next year. My dad used to plant turnips because they would put what, right. some, whatever uh -huh. back into the ground. Right. That was, they, they did that a lot years back and then for some reason they quit doing it. You and know? a lot of people planted so now they're starting oh, yeah, to come back in And oats. Well, maybe that would help the price of the corn or the soybeans if they... Okay, really, yeah. <laughs> so here, it's part of the Bible. We're just talking about the Bible. Well, you got to reel people in. But for one reason they probably don't do is that it's expensive. It's expensive to get the tractor out there. Because we did get a book from one of our organic friends in Wisconsin. They said, plant a cover crop. Yes, Christine we did. Harrington. Yes. So, well, the government's helping to subsidize it right now. Oh, yes. Because yeah. they're figuring out the land needs to be fortified, that the soil is right. getting really depleted, no matter how many chemi chemicals we throw on it. The it put nitrogen is, back in and keep the right. soil in place, keeps yeah. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. cuts down on erosion. Mm -hmm. More natural sources instead of putting the liquid nitrogen in right. there. Mm -hmm. Because that's what God would want. Because we don't own this land. Right. Even though nowadays we buy everything and we've got deed to the land, God tells us right here, the land I'm going to give you. We're stewards of everything we have, all the gifts that God gives us. Now, if we're trying to place where this happened, um, Numbers chapter 10 verses 11 through 12 tells us that all of Leviticus happened in the second month of the second year after the tabernacle was built. Numbers 10 tells us, On the twentieth day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. So after Leviticus was done, the cloud lifted and they're off on the road again. Um, all of chapter 25 verse 1 tells us that all of God's creation is given a Sabbath. Humans, land, Animals, everything. Um, also, the the word for um, the Sabbath of the land in Hebrew is Sabbath Sabbathon, which means it's a Sabbath of Sabbatism, which means that this Sabbath to the land was supposed to happen. It didn't. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about this Sabbath for the land ever happening. And once we get to the penalties, we're going to kind of understand what's happening, or what happened to the Israelites and what's happening now, because they never did what God said for the land. The land is to have a year of rest, in verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you. So whatever happens, you can eat it. You don't plant in the Sabbath year, but whatever whatever grows, you can harvest it, you can eat it. Just don't plant. Like volunteer tomatoes or something. Yeah, exactly. Volunteer yeah. tomatoes. I like yeah. that. Yeah. You, and, and raspberry. Raspberries come back, yeah. And corn. tomato plants. Corn does that too? Yeah, rogue, rogue corn will come out. Oh, okay. Something does, because they turn it over, it takes. As long as it's not GMO, right? Because GMO is just one season. Yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kill the bees. Kill the bees. Oh, please, no. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's, without those bees, we're going to die. Right. Well, so, um, is coming, unfortunately. Yeah, no biblical record of the year of Jubilee, and then we're going to see what the punishments were once we get to chapter 26. All right, the year of Jubilee. Um, count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven, so that the seven Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet, which was actually a ram's horn, sound on the 10th day of the 7th month, on the Day of Atonement. Sounds like Gideon. Just huh? Gideon, he had a ram's horn. So. And they didn't do that? They, they didn't do they, they, Not once did they have the Sabbath year for the land. Oh. And we're going to find out what happens. 
and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. Um, now the liberty that they're talking about was threefold. For those who are disinherited, they could return to the family land. So if for some reason they had to give up the family land, in the Jubilee year they can go back to it. Um, every Hebrew slave is now free. So these are the slaves that sold themselves into slavery because they ran into financial problems or something else. And nobody must work the land in that year. No sowing, fertilizing, tilling, or harvesting. Um, and regarding item two, where every Hebrew slave is free, we see in Exodus 21. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year, he should go free without paying anything. Um, and there was a thing called a forever slave. I think that's the one where he had his ear pierced, pierced and then put into the doorpost. Didn't they do that because the slave wanted to be? Right. Yeah. So even the for, forever slave is released. Exodus 21, 6, Then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door of the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. Yeah, I was kind of squeamish even when we read that the first time. Back they did that in Outlander in the movie he, for stealing. Yeah. Remember, they took this kid and they they put a nail through it to the thing. And to get free, he had to pull himself out. Yeah. And he was afraid. He just sat, laid there. I didn't. Too. <laughs> Someone helped him later. Hmm. They, yeah. That, it, it was gross. I just, I like this. I like, didn't remember that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Leviticus 25, uh, verse 14 to 17. We're talking about the land. Uh, if you sell land to any of your own people or buy land from them, don't take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your own people on the basis of the numbers of years since Jubilee. Now this was important because, once again, they don't really own the land. God owns the land. So you have to calculate the price for how many years are left in that seven year period. Um, and since they're not really selling the land, we find out what the price really relates to in verse 16. What is really being sold to you is the number of crops. So the value is assessed to how much seed they would have to buy to plant those fields for the harvest for those number of years left. They weren't really buying the land, only the crops. Um, Verse 22, let's see. Oh, uh, in verse 21, you know, we, we think about, well, what would they do in the year of Jubilee? If they can't plant, what are they going to live on? What are they going to eat? What are they going to sell? God promises them. In verse 21, I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. God's saying, you can take this year off, give your land a year, because I'm going to give you enough for three whole years in that sixth year. Well, wouldn't they have learned that from Joseph? How they would have saved for a drought or... Put the provisions away? Right. Like the Egyptians right. did? Right. They didn't have to. Because God promised them in the sixth year, you're going to have such a bountiful harvest, you don't have to worry about it for three whole years. So the, remember the Egyptians, they just naturally stored food away after Joseph got there to make provisions. Okay. But here God's making them a promise. You don't have to worry about it. <coughs> it's kind of amazing when you think of the climate and land. Yeah. I mean, you mean holy six years to come out that well. Well, not just that, but not the, the grain, wouldn't it get gross well, after yeah, a year? Yeah, I, I yeah, was just say that. You need ways and Yeah, special ways to preserve it. People, well, we're talking about God. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're talking about God. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we're, we're trying to apply logic. And you could probably dry it. You're working stuff later. Yeah. You can go back to that and prove that. That area was kind of dry, I think. So yeah, maybe so it probably dried out real yeah, quick. Yeah, it'd be easier to yeah. store. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, the Bible tells us. I know, I know. This is impossible. But for God... Right, yeah, come on, people. I know we haven't gotten there yet, but... But, yeah, they could have dried it out. It probably would have lasted a little Well, they longer. would grow figs and dates and stuff that would dry easily and store easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and then again, they was going to have food on the seventh year. It's just they wasn't to plant it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and but the, remember, I, I misspoke earlier. 
they're not even supposed to harvest in the seventh year. So if it dropped off, they could eat it. But here, God's saying, don't worry about it. In the sixth year, I'm going to take care of you. In verse 22, while you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop that I gave you before, and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in. Hmm. So God is saying, I'm going to give you enough abundance for three years. Don't worry about it. So what do those farmers do for that year off? That in my freezer. They rusted. They rested, praise God. Complete for a whole rest. year. No. Complete rest. No so side craft or carving or they mowed the grass. Well, they mowed the grass. Really no work. Yeah. But remember, they never did this. Still football. They never actually did this. So They never got to that point. No, they never, either they didn't trust God enough or they just felt like they needed something to do. But the Bible has no record, and of course there's no historical record either, of this ever happening. They didn't hmm. believe Jehovah Jireh. God will see to it. Jehovah Jireh, I will see to it. They didn't believe that. So yep. They ignored hmm. wow. the Bible. But what you can't see, it's pretty hard to believe. Yeah. Yep. Takes faith. That's why we're blessed. This, this time, we're blessed because we didn't see Jesus die on the cross, and yet we still have the faith to believe in that. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said we'd be blessed because of that. Mm -hmm. We have that faith without the evidence. Yep. And faith without evidence is what God was always seeking from mankind from the beginning. And talking about faith, we watched uh, Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Progress. Progress yesterday. Oh, wow. I loved oh, it. Really? Loved it. Watch it. John loved Bunyan? It. Yeah. Yeah. Watch yeah. it. It's really good. It's, it's a like cartoon, a, a 3D cartoon, though. It's good. It's, yeah. That's good. What, awesome story. What was that on? Netflix. Uh, John Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress. Oh, Amazon. Oh, no, I, I know. Amazon. Oh, no, Amazon. Amazon. $1.99. Yeah. Well. It was a cheap date. We had a good time. So <laughs> Our own popcorn. I about yeah. buying it and letting the kids watch it during the summer Yeah, time. and you were looking to see if they had a study program, and they yeah. kind of had questions for the well, kids. One pastor wrote a, a study guide. Yeah, so awesome show. We'll call us, and then the rest of us will come too. We'll yeah. do. You know, they'll write, they'll make movies for Fifty Shades of Grey, but that's the book that right. they make in a movie. Isn't that bad? Well, I, I think the cartoon was almost better because, well, with technology now, we yeah. could have done the things that were done in the cartoon, but I recommend it for a buck 99 or yeah. get it at the library. Yeah. It was no. great. It was a great I movie. We kept seeing signs. We go, oh, oh, you know, like oh. it all portrayed, it There's all so led up. Scriptures it was in the guy, for incredible. he wrote that, what, 600 years ago or 300 years ago? Uh, John George, 300. 300? 1580? Yeah. So it was, like it was yeah. incredible. There was the guy worldly, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And well, he, he wrote it while he was in prison for 12 years, so. Yeah. He wrote Faith Abound. And no, it's yeah. the first yeah. one. Autobiography. It just came out on video. Yeah. So. Just, just mention it, but, well, a question, does the church still have it? Permit to show movies. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, that that'd be a wonderful movie. Yeah. But that's why it, oh. we're trying to get that started. But Friday I bet you can volunteer. volunteer. <laughs> yeah, I bet you can find it I'll on YouTube too. Friday night movie night. But we'll see. Because what? I turn off the. What?